Neutron activation analysis is the name given to a technique employed in the FBI laboratory to provide a sensitive and accurate method for the examination of physical evidence. First step performed in this procedure is the preparation of samples for introduction into the nuclear reactor. A specially trained agent of the FBI weighs a bone sample submitted by a law enforcement agency to be analyzed for its arsenic content. He weighs a reference sample of arsenic as a standard. The samples will be packaged in polyethylene tubes and lowered to the reactor core. This pool-type nuclear reactor is located at the Naval Research Laboratory in Washington. It is used by the FBI examiners to activate their samples. They are assisted there by reactor personnel. The packaged bone sample and arsenic standard are lowered to the reactor core using an ordinary fishing pole. This keeps the operator at a safe distance from the induced radioactivity of the samples when they are removed from the core. The reactor core, deep under the pool which cools and shields it, operates routinely at a power level of one megawatt. After a predetermined time in the reactor core, the now radioactive samples are removed. A health physicist checks the radiation level to ensure safe handling. The container with contents is carried to a work area and placed behind a protective shield. It is emptied of the bone sample and the arsenic standard, each still sealed in its polyethylene tube. Again, the samples are monitored for radioactivity and then placed in a lead container. Before the lead container can be transported back to the FBI laboratory, it must bear a radioactive material label, which states the radiation intensity at its surface. Here, in the neutron activation analysis unit, the samples are unpacked. Before the examiner can measure any arsenic which may be present, it must first be isolated from other radioactive constituents of the bone. When the bone was exposed to the neutrons, atoms of many of the elements present were made radioactive. After chemical processing, any radioactive arsenic will be isolated in this liquid. This is now poured into a glass container to be analyzed. The container is then placed in a lead-shielded radiation detector. Radiations characteristic of arsenic are sensed by the detector and can be read by the analyzer. Data accumulated by the analyzer is printed out in numerical form for use in calculating the amount of arsenic present. The arsenic content of the bone sample submitted was significantly higher than that of normal human bone. This finding, of course, is of prime importance in a suspected arsenic poisoning. The analyzer also produces a permanent record in chart form. The analysis was quickly and conveniently accomplished in the FBI laboratory employing the great sensitivity of neutron activation analysis for the detection of arsenic. Another examiner has been separating and isolating microscopic particles from a paraffin cast removed from the hand of a suspected gunman. These small particles will be made radioactive in the reactor and the elements comprising these particles will be determined. The nuclear reactor has a system of pneumatic tubes that can carry encapsulated small samples directly to the core. It is monitored, like every phase of reactor operations, through the central control room. The FBI examiner has placed his microscopic samples into a small container called a rabbit and inserts it into the pneumatic tube system. After being exposed to the neutrons at the core of the reactor for a predetermined time, the rabbit, with its now radioactive samples, is returned. A 
health physicist monitors the radiation level before it is withdrawn. The samples will be transferred to a lead container, labeled and hand-carried by the examiner back to the FBI laboratory. In the neutron activation analysis unit, the examiner places samples, now partially converted into radioactive atoms, on a detecting device. This detector, coupled to a multi-channel analyzer, measures the emissions from the radioactive atoms and sorts them out so they can be individually identified. This process is continuously monitored on a cathode ray tube. After sufficient time for the data to accumulate, it can be photographed as well as read out on the viewing screen. The microscopic particles from the paraffin cast contain both antimony and barium as major constituents. These elements are characteristic of residues from primer discharges and indicate the subject could have fired a gun shortly before the paraffin cast was taken. Data relating to the analysis are preserved in graphical and numerical form for possible testimony in court. 